Today I bring you the second version of the programmable RGB LED lights jumper, which means that you can choose the patterns of lights and colors you want to display in it. I'm going to show you the whole process from beginning to end. Let's start! In the first version I did in a previous video, I managed to place few LEDs on a sweater. That first version was a bit complicated to achieve and the designs of the PCBs where the LEDs go was not the best. The PCBs were very small and when using conductive thread, they made contact between them for the little space available. So I had to use small cables and animal copper wire to solder them in their respective places. This small PCB is to facilitate the connection of the RGB LEDs with the whole set since the actual LED has very small connectors. In the second design, I improved the size and spacing of the pads where the thread is tied to. The idea is to use conductive thread since it is like a common thread but it conducts electricity. It is more flexible than the regular wire and it lasts longer. Make sure to use a stainless steel conductive thread since the silver thread oxidizes over time losing its conductivity. The board simply carries an LED and a 100 nanofarad capacitor that is recommended for a better operation. The LED is specifically the WS2812B. As you can see, the pads have been designed so that they have enough contact area and are separated on each side of the board to minimize the possibility of a short circuit or contact between the threads. I have placed the logo of the channel on the back and some indications of polarity. If you're wondering what I use to make these designs, it's a software called ECEDA. This is a free online software, although you can download it too. Once the design is ready, it's time to send it directly to JLC PCB. I have already shown the process in previous videos, so I'll order the PCB straight away, and I'll only have to wait for 3 days approximately for it to be delivered, if you choose DHL. And since now the production times have been reduced to about 24 hours, then you don't have to wait that long which is excellent. JLC PCB is the sponsor of this video. By the way, if it's the first time you order with them and your order is greater than $7, they give you a coupon to cover the shipping cost. Now back to my design. In my case, I have selected a different color for the PCB than the standard green one. That's why the cost increases a bit. I will also buy some LEDs and capacitors from LCSC.com that belongs to the same company and they send everything in the same box. That's why I like JLC PCB. Now let's order the PCBs and wait. After waiting for approximately 3 days, the box arrived with our PCBs and components that I have ordered. I'm going to take a moment to appreciate the PCBs and contemplate the details. These PCBs are pre-cut, so we can easily separate them by splitting them. Here we can compare the green old version and the new version. Now it's time to solder the LEDs and capacitors in position. It is better to solder everything with the PCBs without separating them, because it is faster and easier. After soldering the components, we do a small check one by one using an Arduino loaded with an example program from the Fast LED library and using some small jumper wires. What I am checking is that the LED turns on and change colors without problems. Some do not light up. And if that happens, you have to make sure that they are very well soldered to the pads. If they still don't work, then you have to replace it for a new LED. This stage is important because if we realize that an LED does not work after having placed it into the sweater, then it is more tedious to replace it. With all our LEDs finished, we can start splitting them and then start sewing them onto the sweater. The thread I recommend is the Adafruit stainless steel that I mentioned earlier. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. This is more economical and durable than the silver coated wire and is even less electrical resistant. 
Here is the sweater I bought specifically for this project. Now my task is to see how many of the LEDs I'm going to use for this project and the position. To make the connections, I simply make several turns and knots in each pad. I make sure it is tight so that the thread makes good contact with the pads and then I make a simple seam to direct it to the next LED. I try to make the sewing on the inside of the sweater, taking advantage of the thickness of the fabric, that way it won't be visible on the outside. The connections that go to the Arduino and the battery will be common cables since they are more efficient and have less resistance to conduct electricity. After replacing all the LEDs in the sweater, it is time to make the first tests. At this point I have noticed that one of the LEDs only lights in red and is not able to show the colors green and blue. Then you have to replace it. After solving that I kept doing some tests and I found that there is also a false contact that generates glitches or unwanted blinks in the LEDs. Remember that if there is a problem with the data entry contact, this problem is extended to the rest of LEDs that follow the chain, so it is important to keep the contacts well. Once you are sure everything is making good contact, we use nail polish to ensure all contact. We will choose the Arduino we are going to use for our project. There are several options including the Adafruit Flora, designed especially for these wearables applications. But you can use any board that can run the fast LED library. I could use an Arduino Pro Mini like this, the problem is that to upload a program, it is somewhat annoying, since it does not have an USB port and you need an FTDI that can be found for very cheap, but it would be very annoying to upload a sketch while our Arduino is attached to our sweater. That's why I prefer to use an Arduino Nano that does include an USB port, but the one that I have is damaged, so I'll be using the Arduino Pro Mini. For now, I will upload an example of the library that shows several possible patterns that can be achieved. But you can create your own code to generate custom patterns. In my case, I wrote a simple code that makes a pattern that I had in mind. But I recommend you use the example called Demoreal 100, found in the Fast LED library. You only have to change the number of LEDs that you're using, the output pin, and the kind of chip you're using. We upload it to our Arduino, and remember to solder the set of wires to it. I also connected a JST battery connector. You can use the connector that you want. I use this one that is more convenient for me. Only take into account the voltage that you are going to use for this project. Do not exceed about 11 volts, to be sure. Now it should work without problems. I have also bought a material called Bellastrap that changes resistance when you deform it or press it, perfect to act as a sensor, so we can activate the lights when we press it. But for this we have to make some changes to the code, so I could do this for another video. For now I'm going to use my Christmas jumper and show it to my friends. This is perfect as a Christmas jumper. Or to synchronize it with another activity. You could even connect your Arduino to a Wi-Fi module to control the colors from an application of your mobile device. Also something we could do in another video. Leave in the comments below if you like this project. Would you do one like this? Well guys, I hope you liked this video as much as I did and I enjoyed doing that project with the jumper pad. It was very long and I had to invest a lot of time doing that. But anyways, I uh, still have some issues that I have to fix, for example, the issue of water resistance. I think when I will watch it, it will be damaged, it will damage all the electronics, uh, although I can take out the Arduino but not the LEDs. Uh, I have to make some, uh, you know, procedure to make the LEDs water resistant, but that will be for the next version. Version number three, in which I will include the Velostrap material 
as a sensor, pressure sensor, that will trigger all the other stuff. I hope you like this video, and if you're not subscribed yet, just do that right now, and just like it, and you know, share the video and blah blah blah, whatever, you know, YouTubers say. Anyways, I'll see you in the next project.